Welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. In today's video, which is part two of a two-part series, we're going to be finishing this industrial megastructure project with some painting and final detailing. Before we get started, I'd like to thank everybody who supported me on Patreon. It's a huge help to the channel, and I appreciate it more than you guys can know. If you would like to support the channel, check out the links in the bio below. Without further ado, let's get to it. Let's jump right back into it, right where we left it at the end of last video. The main build is complete, but it still hasn't been painted, so let's do it. I start by painting it with Krylon Fusion All-in-One Textured Black Paint and Primer. This stuff has a mildly pebbled surface, which really helps to break up some of those smooth areas and helps it to bond better with the smooth areas of plastic. As usual, wear a respirator and do this outside. When that's dry, I give everything a once over with Burnt Umber Acrylic Paint. Burnt Umber is a nice reddish brown that's going to form the basis for the rust layer that I'm going to have poking out underneath some of the paint across this project. Next, I dry brush with some silver acrylic paint over all the surfaces that were just painted burnt umber. Already we're starting to develop that awesome weathered metal look that's characteristic of abandoned industrial structures. The silver paint I'm using is just a cheap art store brand paint. The medium in these paints is opaque when wet, so it's a lot more white before it dries, and it has a more of a transparent quality later. The next step is to apply a black wash. This adds some deep shadow to the recesses and increases the contrast in some of the details. I used the simplest black wash I could think of, which is black ink with a little bit of water. As far as wash properties go, this leaves something to be desired, but it's nice and cheap, which is always good for a project with a lot of surface area like this. This helps to create a more varied, grimy look on some of these large surfaces in addition to adding that contrast. Next up, I water down some brown and orange paint, very thin, and apply a rusty wash to specific areas of the project. These I sort of focus on where a drip might be or where water might collect or areas where I just think it'll look good. This goes on more opaque than it dries, so that orange bright look will tone down a little bit by the time it's dry. This again helps to break up the colors and add a little bit of realism to this weathered exposed metal look. Next I'm going to use some masking fluid. This is normally used to block out areas in watercolor paintings, but I'm going to use it to get a cool chipping effect. So I put a little bit of this masking fluid in my palette, and this stuff smells terrible. I was not ready for this. Then using an old brush, I apply it all over these gang box pieces on specific areas that I felt would get the most weathering. Edges, corners things like that. I try to make a random pattern and apply it where I think it would look good. This is kind of hard as you're working in the negative. All the areas that are covered now are going to be the pieces that are rusty later. So it's a bit of a challenge to get yourself to think that way. I use a little corner of a piece of sponge brush because this allows me to get some finer, more specular bits of rust. I apply those in the areas I want them. This particular masking fluid dries clear, 
so it's a little bit tricky to remember where you've put it if you don't all do it in one go. Best to work fast at this stage. Next I come in with a grey green acrylic paint and paint off those areas that I just masked off with the masking fluid. I chose this grey green colour because it reminds me of a Soviet era industrial building that's since been neglected and repurposed and etc. This sort of Soviet era scheme is featured in a lot of my reference photos and it's a cool way to add colour while still having that abandoned industrial look that I really like. Once the paint is dry, I start pulling up the masking fluid to reveal some chipped areas underneath. I use my fingertips and paint brushes to lift up the edges of the masking fluid and reveal these chips underneath. Some areas work better than others and have a much more natural pattern, like this corner here is what I'm looking for, all that tiny little flakes of rust. And overall, this is my first time using this technique and I'm pretty pleased with it. I think the results are pretty cool. Next I come back in with some more rust colored wash and do some drips streaking down from the exposed chipped areas that I just created. I also do another pass with a dark wash just to add some more filth and grime and drips. I want this thing to look so filthy that just looking at it makes you want to get a tetanus shot. Next I'm going to paint this computer console at the top. I start by painting it a dark brown and then dry brush with silver. Same way I do everything else with this industrial build but I'm just being a little bit more careful here because of the fine details. From there I add black to the screens and then starting with a dark green I paint the bottom left corner of all the screens and progressively highlight with lighter and lighter greens until I've created a sort of glowing screen effect. It's pretty subtle but I think looks good. Next I come in with a little bit of white and green paint mixed together and I add some lines of code or little dots that suggest lines of code and this really suggests a computer console using a legacy sort of technology. I think it looks awesome. Next let's do a bit of graffiti. I started with a big colorful piece because I wanted to add some color. Blocked it in with red, outlined it with black, but then I wanted to add some other graffiti pieces sort of peeking out from behind them so I used white to do that. The idea I was trying to go for was that different gangs are putting their tags on this particular spot and coming out and crossing over each other's stuff and updating stuff and etc. And I think this really adds to the layered nuanced look of this being a piece of territory that's being fought over. Next I added another bit from the Sector Mechanicus sets just to add a bit more detail on the edge of this tower. And I'll add just a final touch of a little bit more piping. And that's the finished product. I'm really pleased with how this piece turned out. It's grand, it's gloomy, it's gritty, there's tons of little areas of detail, and there's lots of places for different guys to stand. There's also a ton of different areas where you can put catwalks coming up to the various platforms and have this piece connect to other pieces and provide a really dynamic tabletop. I imagine this top console could be used as an objective or just look really cool. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends if you think it's something they'd like.
If you enjoy the content I've been creating and want to support the channel, please visit the Patreon in the link below. If you support me that way, it's a huge help to the channel, and there's going to be some really awesome patron-only content on there that you wouldn't want to miss. Even if you don't play any tabletop war games, if you collect miniatures, this sort of piece is absolutely awesome for displaying them and just playing around with them. I kind of went nuts filming this end segment because of that. The things just looked so cool, I had to get all my gangs on there and some of my other models as well. I hope you enjoy all these extra showcase shots. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.